Hey everybody, what's up? It's Michelle Ratowski here with Daytona Fit Mom, and thanks for tuning in today. This is um, part two. We're going to talk a little bit more about raising a child with asthma, um, kind of my journey and what we've been experiencing so far, and just wanted to talk more about it, and there will be a blog to follow um, to kind of educate everybody on um, our whole journey in case somebody's going through the same thing or has questions or wasn't sure and this is a place for us to ask questions and things like that but today's topic I really wanted to talk about um, <clears throat> if you think we talked about all the symptoms and stuff in the past videos and um, what do you do next so next would be getting a diagnosis and seeing a specialist and how you would do that is you would have to get a referral from your pediatrician to a childhood specialist in your area. And, um, of course, I'd have to see, you know, what insurance covers who and all that stuff. So for us, we were able to see a childhood specialist for lung, asthma, pulmonary, and sleep specialist in the area. And kind of what to expect. Um when going through this we really didn't know what to expect when we showed up so just to share a little bit of that with you when you go in for your appointment um, depending on your child's age now it is harder to diagnose for a younger child um, four and under three and under um, but four and five and above um, what they'll do is they'll go more into the pulmonary side and they have special tests that they check the breathing capacity, how much air is being taken in, how much air is coming out when they breathe. So they hook them up to a machine, it doesn't hurt, it's very simple, um, and they blow air in and the computer records these numbers and can really help the doctor see what the intake and outtake of air is for an asthmatic child. Um, but that's where you'd start with diagnosis. And it's pretty simple and it's quick. They'll probably have them do it, then they'll give them a breathing treatment, they'll wait a couple minutes and have them go do it again and see if the breathing treatment helped or not, and it really helps them come up with what plan of action they're going to take to help your child. Now, if your child does suffer from allergies and um, there's a chance that the asthma could be allergy related, they might also do a prick test as well, and for the prick test, they will... Um, and they could test for everything, environmental, foods, pets, and um, they do it on their back, their neck, and the back of their arms, depending on how much you have to get tested for, and if it swells up, then you're allergic. So in our case, um, nothing swelled up, and she went through all that for nothing. <laughs> um, but I just brought her her iPad. She was able to watch some stuff and kind of get her mind off of it while she was going through it. And from there... Um, and sometimes if you're taking an antihistamine like a Zyrtec or a Benadryl, it can mess with the prick test. So they might want you to also get a blood test done. In our case, once again, we did get the blood test done and still everything came back negative. But I was the same way when I was younger. Um, so for her, we just don't know what she's allergic to. But anyway, that's just what you'll expect when you go to see a specialist. And um, ask questions when you go there. They'll come up with a game plan. Um, I'm going to talk more in the next series about... Sorry about that. We lost the connection, so I'm going to wrap it up. I'll talk more about the medications and stuff in our next video. But for now, look for my blog, and I hope some of this information helps you out on how to get... Um, a diagnosis and when to see a specialist. If you have any questions, comment below and I'll come back and answer them later. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.